Uh, champions for uh, the Indiana game on offense. Michael, uh, four receivers played really well. They were challenged about their perimeter blocking, and it was uh, the best we had uh, this year. And that helped uh, on, uh, some of Don, um, uh, Zeke's runs. Um, so Michael Thomas, Braxton Miller, uh, Corey Smith, who we lost uh, for the rest of the season. He had a similar injury to uh, Noah Brown. And uh, one of my favorite players, uh, you know, a guy that's been through some, a lot in his life and uh, uh, certainly a lot here. But uh, my heart bleeds for that guy and so do the rest of our team. I mean, a great uh, kid that really spills it, was on all special teams for us, played really, really hard. So um, uh, from what I understand, there's a chance that we can get it one more year back. We're going to you know, see what happens. Uh, so that's uh, uh, Corey Smith. Dontre Wilson was back full speed and played uh, one of his best games. You know, performance-wise, he didn't touch the ball as much, uh, but his effort and blocking and it was exceptional. Offense line, you had two players, Billy Price and Pat Elfline, created champion and player of the game was Ezekiel Elliott, um, and played outstanding uh, for us. He's uh, obviously the yards, uh, and I say it each week. He's pass from pass protection to Downfield blocking, uh, exceptional. Uh, Indiana, let's see here. Defense, you had Joey Bosa, Tommy Shutt, Von Bell, Garyon Conley, Josh Perry, <clears throat> Raekwon McMillan, who uh, we had to take out of the game for a little bit. He had a migraine, but he's fine today. Yesterday he was fine. Uh, Darren Lee, and then players of the game, co-players of the game, uh, Taekwon Lewis, had uh, 11 tackles, and Adolphus Washington had 12 tackles. Uh, by the way, Raekwon Mc McMillan had 16. Special teams, a uh, pretty dominant effort. Uh, kickoff team was outstanding. Uh, punt team, uh, I think kickoff and punt, we lead the Big Ten. Um, missed a field goal, a 40-plus yarder. And, uh, but punt return was, again, we, I think, three times gave the ball to the offense on the plus side of the uh, 50. And the guys that played well there are, uh, see here, Eric Smith played well, Von Bell played well, Jalen Marshall. We give a Thursday race award to Eric Smith just for his effort. And then the black shirt, who the, uh, the player of the game in special teams is Joe Berger. Obviously stopped a fake punt for us and a very uh, important guy on uh, a punt block in KOR. So uh, a big win, 5-0. and oh is, uh, Best thing about 5-0 and oh is a chance to go 6-0, a oh, uh, chance to keep getting better. Um, two areas of strength in the past are not strength right now. We're, we're uh, hitting that really, really hard, and that's turnovers, and that's red zone production. So those are two areas we're going to uh, beat it like it's never been beat before and try to get better because that's costing us a lot of, uh, you know, you're getting 500-plus yard days, and we're not, we're not, that's not transitioning to what should happen in a game like that. Uh, defense, you know, they eliminated their tailback, eliminated their quarterback, and then that athletic guy got in there and hurt us a little bit. Uh, obviously, a big hit was a missed tackle and, and missed leverage. But overall, attitudes are good. Guys are running around yesterday, a chance to get better. And uh, I think college football teaches us all each week is you better show up and you better play each week or you're in a dogfight. Uh, everybody has scholarship players, and they have good players. And uh, we certainly respect that around here, and we're going to keep getting better. So with that said, I'll answer your questions for you. Fred Rowe Middle, Dave. As you analyze the film, Coach, uh, how did Cardale grade out? Uh, obviously not a champion. Uh, when you turn the ball over, it's, it's hard to grade a champion. He had his best week of practice. He had uh, a decent day. If he threw almost 70% completion rate, we misfired on a, uh, three in a row, which is just awful. Uh, and it's not just him. It's just the timing of the wideouts and quarterbacks. And, and uh, I've addressed that. And... Uh, but if you hit three of those passes, you're over 70% completion rate. And obviously, the one pick was not inexcusable. And, um, but he, he's getting better. He had one of his better days. There are issues on third down as well. It seems like this year, you 2 of 14 this past game. What are you seeing on third down? What's the biggest problem on third down? Uh, timing and execution of the quarterback wideouts. And uh, yeah, it hasn't been our strength. You know, last year, one of the top teams in the country with it. Second row left, Ari. Uh, over the summer, I heard you uh, speaking at a coaching clinic, and you told the coaches that were there that in the recruiting game, you always take the most talented player available, and you never sacrifice talent for scheme because it's easier to scheme around a player than right. you know with talent. When did you land on that philosophy? How did you learn that? And uh, you know, why do you do it that way? 
Well, because I think uh, schemes overrated. I think competitive spirit, human spirit, and, and obviously ability or overrule all that. And I, you know, I get, get, I think it's comical when I hear her say, well, it doesn't fit our system. Well, change your system. You know, I think I give credit to our offensive staff. We got here and there was no H backs. You know, we had a big tailback and a couple tight ends and a fullback and. And you went 12 and 0, and we didn't complain about it. Didn't say, "Well, we don't have this, don't have this." And you, so you adapt your schemes. And um, I think that's, in my opinion, the good, you know, coordinators and those type of guys do a very good job of that. And you'll find out what you got and do it. And don't, uh, you know, don't. Well, he doesn't fit. He doesn't fit. That's make him fit. And we'll always take the better player and then find a way to make him fit. We we there for years. Never had a tight end. For some reason. Going back, thinking why the hell we did that, but at Bowling Green didn't have, you know, they really have a tight end, in Utah, and uh, and so we started playing with tight ends. We got good ones, so that's why. That recruiting philosophy is it easier, harder, different at a place like Ohio State than it might be for another coach in another conference or another program that might not be recruiting at the level that you guys are to carry it. No, I think it's actually, you know, at a place like uh, Bowling Green or Utah, you take your best available athlete, you get your hands on and mold around what you can do with it. So I think it's the opposite. I think you have to take, uh, I remember the days at BG and at uh, Utah, that kid could run, a kid could play, we're going to take him and find out, you know, find out what he can do after that, how, or find out how you build around him. You know, like a real little guy that's fast as you know what, and then build around him. When you watch the tape, do you see a team that is really, really close to being great? I did this time. That? Good question, Bill. I think, uh, you know, I was disappointed in primitive. The secret there, not the secret, the, the foundation of our offense control line of scrimmage, do we do that? Yes. Uh, perimeter blocking, yes, our guys did an excellent job. And hit the downfield play action pass, nah, OK. We had a couple downfield shots we hit. Mike Thomas and Jalen Marshall off the top of my head. Um, but the foundation is also turnovers and stupid penalties. You know, we score and we chop a guy. You know, just th there's, there's some back break. And same on defense. We had six penalties, I think, on defense. So it's very close. Uh, I don't like to use the term great because I don't know. That's all relative to, you know, usually I don't say great because what's that mean? Uh, improvement and very efficient. When you have the turn penalties and turnovers, that's that does that stops efficiency. So I, I think we're on a border of being very good. Um, and you mentioned the red zone. You're six of 16 scoring touchdowns. Um, what is the, <laughs> what's the problem? Oh, variety. I just gave you a couple of them. You know, turnovers and, and uh, penalties. We you know, Zeke Elliott goes in the end zone. We get a call back, and I think we missed a field goal on that one. So there's not one problem. It's a variety of problems. Far right, Blake. <laughs> Rightly or wrongly, every team's going to be judged by last year's team, the way they were galvanized. Does that take a whole season to build to that point? Is this team, are they there? Do they have that potential of chemistry, of singleness, of purpose? Oh, really good question, Clay. Uh, I don't know yet. We're, we're, I, I love these guys. I mean, I, as far as the indicators that there is an issue, uh, we, that was one of the hardest we played. Uh, in the last two years this past week. And I didn't say we played perfect, didn't say we played efficiently or actually smart when you have stupid penalties and you're in a minus three in a turnover ratio, but those things are fixable. When you start getting effort and attitude, the things you just mentioned, that's when you gotta, that's where red flags start showing up and I don't feel that at all. Uh, and I watch for that like a hawk because I've seen that infiltrate a team before and it's, you know, we see it across the country all the time. And we've seen it happen here, you know, in uh, 2000, whatever it was, what was it, 13, 2013, you know, I just, it wasn't a, it was not a great team. A bunch of very good players and won a bunch of games, but it was not a great team. Uh, this one has the characteristics of having a great team. Last year's obviously was a great team. 2012, great team. I didn't say exceptional skill everywhere, but great team. Far left, Matt. Uh, what changed with the running game in the second half? Is you know you were kind of stagnant, and then Zeke obviously breaks the big ones. But was it a scheme change or a little bit? Just... We went to a gap scheme, a little bit more downhill. Uh, I think everyone he hit the three big ones he hit were all uh, gap schemes where he came down there doing some movement. Anytime you get movement, you try to 
wash him down. And, and uh, our offense line did a good job. And obviously, Zeke's so talented, he came out the other end a couple of them. And once he does, he's, I don't know if anybody can catch that guy. I uh, also want to ask, one of the things you've done well, especially last year, is get off to quick starts, um, you know, 14, 21, nothing. And is, what are you seeing that's stopping that this year? You've, you've had a couple of good first drives uh, this year. Nothing like what we expect or what we shoot for. Um, I think very similar to Bill's question, what's the problem in the red zone? What's the problem in that? You know, the first call, I'll take that. You know, we lose 15 yards on our first darn call of the game. That's my fault. You know, I just wanted to get Braxton to touch and try to get him to the field, and they blitz the corner. So um, same same issues. I, I think the term is efficiency. Um, if it was effort, which I thought at times uh, in the first couple games, just our perimeter blocking wasn't there. And uh, I didn't feel that at all. It's, it's just efficiency and uh, making things happen and, and someone creating a big play. So. Well, those are all things that you're mentioning or things that are being emphasized. And we've been, you know, I think we're second in rushing, second in scoring offense right now, and, and we still don't feel like we're doing our jobs. And that's pretty good expectations. Front row right, Tim. Yeah, Urban, uh, a couple things. Number one, uh, uh, do you, th I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what happened with Curtis Samuel on, on Saturday. Was he? Was he didn't he practice just, this week. He, he had a back spasms. Okay. But he's, he feels better now. He didn't practice all week. And we, he played a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But that was okay. it. Okay. That's cleared up. And then number uh, number two, uh, when you look at Von Bell right now, is he playing on – what level is he playing on? Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, uh, what yeah, he's, he's uh, playing extremely well, I guess. Well, I've been fortunate to have some great safeties. He's one of the top three or four I've ever been around. And he's an excellent tackler. Um, he did lose leverage on the one play that went out. But uh, he's playing very well. He, You know, he, that quarterback for theirs uh, – I was so involved with the other side. I, I looked and you know I saw him out there playing, and he threw that ball right on the dime, right at the end of the game, and uh, Von Bell knocked it out right on the dime. And uh, so Von Von's playing a very, to answer your question, playing a very very high level. And the other thing, again, an offense. You know, you've spoken many times about how big plays are part and parcel to what y'all want to do and stuff. Can you live on big plays? I mean, uh, what's just sort of what's your thought now as you look? Well, I think everybody's looking for exceptional, and we were very fortunate here the last couple of years to break a multitudes of school records. And if you evaluate how that happened, it all starts with the, what I talked about: the offensive line controlling line of scrimmage. Uh, then the perimeter blocking around here the last couple of years has been outstanding, from Carlos Hyde to Zeke Elliott to Braxton Miller to, and those are all a result of you know you're going to make one miss, you can't make three or four miss. Perimeter blocking, and then the downfield hits. We, you know, we we've had. We, we're we're getting a few of them, not near the extent that we'd like. Uh, and that's play action pass game. And when those three things are in unison, if they're all working together, then we're probably talking about something else right now. Front row right, Austin. Urban, you had already taken Evan Spencer and Devin Smith out of the equation. Now you have Noah Brown and Corey Smith on the shelf. Lawrence Gibson has been hurt. Dr. Wilson has had some foot injuries. What do you see when you look at your wide receiver unit right now? Well, they, I saw four guys that graded out champions, and you know we, we just lost one guy. I think we get uh, Paris Campbell back this week. I see another group of kids, James Clark, um, Terry McLaurin, and uh, Paris Campbell, who are our gunners, which are very they're uh, they're treat, treated with reverence around here. The gunners on our kickoff and punt team. That's why we're so good at it, because they're fast and tough guys. So so I, I see a group that's getting better. I see a group that's not where we want to be. And, and uh, the time in between a quarterback and receivers is not where it needs to be right now. You referenced um, two things with Braxton, the, the chop block and then the first play of the game. Just Is it difficult to manage him right now? How no, no. It's uh, I want it more as better and more than he does. To, you know, we gave him two touches. One was a counter. He went for 15, 16 yards. And then one was the push to start the game. And then he's in there. He played 30 plays. And we can't direct it. The defense directs where the ball goes. Not, not the, you can't say throw it to him. You just can't do that. Because what if him's covered? So, yeah, it, it, no, it's not. It's frustrating that, you know, he graded a champion. Uh, the Virginia Tech game, he did not. So think about that. So, I mean, the individual effort was outstanding. He did touch the ball, but he had so many mistakes. They were blocking, and ex offensive football is not a one-man show. It's 11 guys getting their jobs done. So the positive, he's heading that direction to be a full-time receiver. Uh, uh, front row 
left, Doug. Urban, ideally in your offense, how would you like the quarterback run game to work? And are you okay with where things are right now? Obviously, it seems to be a little different when Cardale's in there. Are you okay with that? Car uh, the quarterback run game obviously depends on who that quarterback is. You know, we've had uh, Alex Smith. We we didn't use him a ton, but he had some yards. Um, Josh Harris, we used him extensively. So I'm just giving you a quick history of Josh Harris, Alex Smith, uh, Chris Leak, not not much at all. Uh, Tim Tebow a lot, Braxton Miller a lot, and then Kenny Guyton not much, and and uh, JT a lot. And then Cardell, not much at all. So I, you'd like to have that. The threat of that cleans up defenses for you. That's the extra component that you have in an offense. We haven't really done much at all of that uh, this year. Uh, obviously, Cardell's not that type of player. He's also he's a very good runner, but he's not. He's more of a scrambler than he is um, quarterback counter, quarterback power, those type of things. So we're not where we need to be, but we're not. That's not. We're not heavy on that right now. So with, in picking Cardell, you obviously you were okay. JT, if you were to pick JT, I'm sure would do more of that. That's the decision that went into that. You're okay. Well, I think it's like the question I, you might have asked earlier. Do you, you know, do you just take the guy for scheme, or do you take the guy, the best guy at the time, and you take the best guy and build around what he can do? And we, we've asked a lot uh, about Braxton a lot, but you, you've said that Dontre is coming on a little bit, playing better. You've said good things about Curtis, and if he gets back to health, you know, Braxton had the block that took back the touchdown. He didn't do much when he got the ball in his hands. Does he still deserve a lot of playing oh, sure, time, or do Dontre sure. and Curtis and guys? No, like he touched it twice, and, and I got it. We got to get him uh, more touches. Uh, I mean, the direct touches that he that he can do. Um, he came almost came out of one 15, 14, 15 yard gain, and the other one was just a bad call by me. Uh, but no, he deserves touches. He's an electric player with the ball in his hand. We just have not got him loose last couple games. You, but you said he was a champion, so mm -hmm. things he was blocking and doing. Blocked what was he doing off. that made him a champion? Uh, yeah, effort and blocking. Played 30, I think 30 plays. Played, uh, yes, 30 plays and graded out 85%. That means a lot of, you know, some of those runs, maybe I can't off the top of my head think, but some of the hits in that were because of his effort. And final questions, back row middle, Steve. Yeah, Coach, uh, you have some experience, obviously, at Florida with a goal line specialist type quarterback. Given, you know, I don't know if this past week was a pattern or if it just an anomaly, but would you ever consider putting JT in to be the red zone guy? He had very good success in that role last year. That's a good point. Uh, we we thought about it and uh, we have had that conversation. Uh, at this time, I haven't we we haven't made any decisions on that right now.